Many necessary elements, such as calcium, protein, and vitamin D, can be found in milk. Many people consider it to be an important part of a well-balanced diet. Others, on the other hand, offer a variety of reasons for refusing to drink it. Chances are that you may also have heard from your elders that milk is essential for our complete nutrition. But is it really? Let's find out in this video. Welcome Curiosix. Don't forget to like and subscribe to let YouTube knows you like what you are watching. So let's start. Milk is basically an infant food. It has everything a baby needs for easy digestion, brain development, and protection from illness and infections. But how do humans end up drinking other animals' milk? More importantly, who was the first person to think, hey, I want some of that, when they saw an animal feeding its baby? Dairy began around 8000 BCE in what is now Turkey, and the first milk from animals was transformed into yogurt, cheese, and butter for food safety reasons in the days before refrigeration. Then Mother Nature intervened and threw everything into disarray. People and cattle traveled, bringing with them a genetic mutation known as lactose tolerance, which appeared inexplicably shortly after dairy products were produced. Humans, like all mammals, were not designed to digest lactose, the natural sugar found in milk, after childhood. However, approximately 6000 BCE, some adult humans developed the ability to digest lactose, which was passed down through individuals in Europe, Africa, and the Middle East. Adult humans may have consumed other mammals' milk since disease was preferable to death during hunger, and infants always required milk if a mother or wet nurse was unavailable. The cornerstone of our milk-drinking culture was laid as humans changed and evolved. It's possible that scientists will never figure out why adult lactose tolerance evolved so quickly. Other researchers have proposed that fresh milk provided a more pure fluid alternative to contaminated water sources in desert regions, that milk fat gave people a fertility advantage, or that milk consumption was linked to social status. Milk provided humanity with an advantage in the fight against malaria and many more diseases. The Industrial Revolution ushered in a new era of urban culture and large-scale production, but it also posed challenges for those who still desired their milk. Diseases such as typhoid fever, scarlet fever TB, and diphtheria could be transmitted by raw milk due to distance and unclean urban dairies. Then came the method of destroying harmful bacteria through heat that is, pasteurization. When Louis Pasteur originally devised the pasteurization process, he wasn't thinking about milk, Instead, like any good Frenchman, he was thinking about sour wine. However, the solution to the problem turned out to be essentially the same, heat treatment to eliminate harmful microorganisms. That would seem to be the end of the story. But, as it turns out, is not the case. Commercial milk is now pasteurized. All the living food in raw milk delicate enzymes, probiotic bacteria, and various other nutrients is bombed with extreme high heat and left for dead. Left in its wake is a trail of lost vitamins and minerals, altered flavor and texture and denatured proteins. Simply put, pasteurization is an absolute disaster for human health because it kills many of the nutrients in milk that our bodies need in order to process it. Every coin has a flip side, they say. Milk has been associated with terms like pressures, acnes, allergies mainly because the person is lactose intolerant. A 2015 study estimates 65 to 70 percent of the world's population has some form of lactose intolerance. Studies have also suggested that excess calcium from milk and other foods may increase the risk of prostate cancer. Milk sugars may be linked to a slightly higher risk of ovarian cancer. What about bone fractures? It seems that drinking three or more glasses of milk a day may increase the risk of bone fractures in women. Studies found that this may be due to a sugar called D-galactose in milk. However, the study did explain that further research is needed before dietary recommendations are made. So you probably don't have to worry about that for now. A 2016 study found that teenagers with acne drank higher amounts of low-fat or skim milk. Dairy may also trigger adult acne. Other studies have linked acne to skim and low-fat milk. This may be due to milk's influence on certain hormones, including insulin and insulin-like growth factor 1. So what is the conclusion? Is milk really safe to consume? Actually yes, if taken 100 to 250 milliliters per day, given you don't have any allergies. It really is a power food that was prevalent during times of crisis, as it is rich and nutritious. But you could also get all that vitamins, minerals and calcium from other food sources. Milk is not essential for us to survive, especially in this day and age. 
But we should also keep this in mind that dairy has become a commercial product. 909 million tons amount of milk produced by cows, buffalo, and other livestock worldwide in 2017. India produces the most, about 20% of the world's supply. The US, which produces the most cow's milk, is next, at 12%. This massive production is polluting the environment. In California, the top dairy producing state, dairy cows account for 45% of the state's methane emissions and 38% of its nitrous oxide, 57 another extremely potent greenhouse gas. Thousands of cattle are being slaughtered and used as objects for this huge industry to make profit. So we need to decide as a society, what is good for us and the environment that we live in. Thank you for watching. Press that bell icon so that you get notified whenever we post a new informative video.